Oh hey, you know technology is genuinely incredible. Someone developed this remote where all you have to do is press one button and it will remaster all of the video and audio that you're currently seeing, supposedly at least. Let's give it a shot and see how it works. So is this working okay? Can you hear me better? Can you see me better? Is it working worse? Is it working better? The concept of remastering media goes back to the dawn of media itself. No seriously, people have been doing it forever. One of the first films ever made, back in 1895, called Arrival of a Train, got a 3D remaster in 1934. No, I'm not kidding, that actually happened. So you would think, because we've been remastering movies for so long, video game remasters should be no problem. You would think that. You wanna see a magic trick? Cool, huh? Video game remasters are the very definition of mixed, even Merriam-Webster agrees with me. Game remasters best fit into three separate tiers in my opinion. The good remasters, such as the case with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 and Ocarina of Time 3D, which remaster these classic games with new graphics, new sound, but they keep the gameplay relatively the same. Then there's the remasters that are fine, but don't really change a ton. The LEGO remasters and the Phoenix Wright trilogy pop into my mind. Don't get me wrong, these are both great games and these are awesome ways to play them, but you would be missing absolutely nothing by playing these on the older hardware that they were originally intended for. Then we get to... And that, my friends, is the topic of today's video, the bad remasters, specifically two of the most recent ones to come out, the Grand Theft Auto Definitive Trilogy and Sonic Colors Ultimate. Wait a minute. On first glance, in my opinion, these remasters look really nice, especially comparing them directly up to their last generation counterparts. The graphics remind me of pre-rendered cutscenes from the Dreamcast and PS2 era, and I mean that in a good way. Mixing these nostalgic low-poly models with super detailed environments and textures was, in my opinion, the way to go. I know a lot of other people hate how this looks, but I think it looks like a faithful recreation of the PS2 era graphics. You gotta remember, graphics weren't pretty back then. Unfortunately, that's one of the only nice things I can say about the GTA Definitive Trilogy. They may look pretty, but under the hood, it's a mess of issues. Let's start with the performance. Most of the time it runs okay, but I do have frame drops occasionally into the high teens, which is a bit of a problem considering the fact that I have a 3060 Ti graphics card that runs Grand Theft Auto V perfectly fine in 4K. Yet, despite this technically preceding GTA V, it runs far worse. Another major problem I have with this remaster is the rain. It's bright white and absolutely blinding at points. You can't see where you're going at night, and this is something that haunts all three remasters. Another thing that sucks about these remasters is the fact that they cut a bunch of songs from the in-game radio. No longer can you cruise down the streets of Vice City blasting Michael Jackson or Ozzy while committing your vehicular manslaughter. You can't even blast Love Fist, and Love Fist is a band that Rockstar owns. Is this an oversight, or was there genuinely a licensing issue here? And you know what? I'm starting to regret what I said about the graphics earlier. Yeah, they can be pretty at times, but the character models up close can be absolutely horrifying. What the hell is going on with Ryder's arms? You're telling me they they couldn't fix that shit? The only saving grace this trilogy has is the fact that there are genuine improvements implemented. For example, the weapon wheel from GTA 5 returns, and thank god. This is the most comfortable way to select a weapon in a modern video game in my opinion. I also love that they updated the drive-by controls for San Andreas. Overall, despite the plague of issues that these games suffer from, they're still more than playable. There's graphical bugs, there's missing content, there's a shit ton of other things that makes these not the definitive editions, but still very, very playable. Playable. Now you may be wondering, if these aren't really the definitive editions, they just called it that for marketing, why should I play these over the original PS2 classics? Well, unless you happen to already own them on Steam or own the original PS2 discs like I do, you can no longer purchase them, or at least you weren't able to up until somewhat recently. Rockstar removed the original trilogy from Steam, and as far as I know, they also took it down from the PlayStation and Xbox stores. You can technically still buy the original trilogy, they come with the GTA Definitive Edition the Rockstar launcher now, but I think that's kinda shitty. Just because you release a new version of a game doesn't mean you have to nuke every other version of said game out of existence. When Nintendo released the Link's Awakening remake, they didn't take down the Game Boy version from the 3DS eShop. I mean, why would they? It's technically part of history. It's the same thing with Rockstar. Why would they remove the original trilogy just because they're introducing a remaster? It's removing part of history, and as a game preservationist, that bothers me. All in all, despite positive first impressions, the GTA Definitive Trilogy is anything but. The PS2 games are still the way to go because they have a solid frame rate and the rain isn't absolutely annoying. If you can find PS2 copies or Steam keys for these versions of the game, I would recommend these over this any day of the week. And now for something completely different. When you hear the phrase, worst remaster in recent memory, some may immediately point to the Silent Hills collection or Mario 3D All-Stars. 
This puts them both to shame. Sonic Colors Ultimate absolutely mutilates the Wii game. Blind Squirrel Entertainment is who we have to blame for this. Now, Blind Squirrel aren't completely nobodies. They had worked on a couple things before, specifically the Mass Effect and Borderlands Game of the Year and Legendary Editions. Then again, they also worked on that shitty console port of The Sims 4, as well as those super unmemorable Jedi Challenges phone VR games, so who the hell knows. Either way, when this was first revealed, I was very excited. I even thought that the games looked good, pretty much unlike everyone else. Everyone else was roasting the bloom and the amount of saturation going on. I thought that it looked pretty damn good though and the upscale textures looked great. Cut to the release week and a Nintendo Switch version had leaked for the Yuzu emulator. This told a completely different story. An abysmal frame rate, graphical glitches that could cause literal seizures, and an OST that you're not able to switch back to the original. If you don't like these new remixes, tough shit. Specifically because of the graphical bugs and frame rate issues, I decided against getting a copy for the Nintendo Switch and decided to get the deluxe edition for the PlayStation 4 instead, which came with this neat little baby Sonic keychain. This is the only thing that makes this a deluxe edition, by the way. It was just an overstock keychain that they couldn't sell for the Sonic movie, so they just threw it into Sonic Colors for absolutely no reason. I'll admit, the first couple minutes I was playing this game, it played pretty much fine. And then I noticed that the physics were tweaked ever so slightly to piss me off. It doesn't feel exactly like the original Wii game, which I have a bunch of hours clocked into. And if that wasn't frustrating enough, I started running into bugs immediately. The game would crash over and over again, on top of constant freezing whenever I would get hit by an enemy or a projectile. It's times like this where I wonder exactly how this constitutes as a remaster. Nothing here feels like it's changed from the original for the better. At least with San Andreas, it felt like it was trying to be a bigger and better version of the original game, but with the exception of these upscaled textures, there's nearly nothing new of value added to this quote-unquote ultimate version of Sonic Colors. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's new additions, but they either feel minuscule and unfleshed out or just straight up bad. For example, they added races with Metal Sonic. Aside from the derpy ass looking icon, it's fine. It plays okay, it's fine. But the soundtrack is... Why? I remember back before the game came out, there was a rumor floating around that you were able to swap between the original soundtrack and the new soundtrack freely, and that would have been a great feature, but unfortunately, they either forgot about that, they just didn't implement it, or it was never in the game in the first place, because the first three acts of every single zone feature a new remix, and it's the definition of mixed bag. Starlight Carnival and Asteroid Coaster do seem like genuine improvements over the original, along with a couple boss themes, but Sweet Mountain Act 2 and 3, Tropical Resort Act 2, the entire entirety of Aquarium Park, none of these hold a candle up to the original soundtrack, and it would be lovely to be able to switch back and forth at will like they originally promised. And don't get me wrong, Acts 4, 5, and 6 do have the original soundtrack, but that's very little consolation. Acts 1, 2, and 3 are typically the longer acts they're going to be spending the most amount of time on anyways. The only other thing I can think of that's quote-unquote new that they added to this game is the new customization menu, which allows you to change Sonic's gloves, shoes, boost, and aura. It reminds me a lot of the custom avatar maker in Sonic Forces, and just like that, this isn't really my sort of thing, I just kept with the standard white gloves and red shoes, but I did change the boost a little bit about halfway through my playthrough just to make it look a little different. So yeah, Metal Sonic Races, a new soundtrack, and a customization menu. That's it. $39.99. It is worth noting that Blind Squirrel is slowly going through the game and fixing some of the genuine bugs and issues that it has. At the time of this video, I believe they're on their third patch for the Switch and second patch for the Xbox and PlayStation. No matter what patch they release though, the game doesn't change at all for me. It still freezes, it still lags, it still crashes. This is still a terrible way of playing Sonic Colors, and I would recommend an emulator or any of the countless generations mods light years before this. But enough of the negative. I think I finally got this remote up and running, so I'm gonna give it one more shot. What's the worst that could happen? Well, at least it made the video easier to look at. <laughs>